How wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video, let's talk about another incredible discovery made by the James Webb Space Telescope that allowed us to see something we've never seen before. The discovery we've discussed briefly in one of the previous videos that essentially shows us what's known as a triple lens, specifically a lens supernova that scientists have been looking for for a very long time. And that's because this is what's known as a Type 1a supernova allowing us to establish exact distances in outer space. And so in this video, let's actually talk a little bit more about this very unusual and very unique event, and more importantly, discuss the actual conclusions from recent studies. The conclusion being that the so-called Hubble tension, or the unexplained mystery of the expansion of the universe, seems to be there after all. In other words, the universe seems to expand at different acceleration in different locations in space. But here, let's I guess begin with the basics. And the basics in this case is the idea behind the Hubble constant and the idea behind the expansion of the universe accelerating the farther away from Earth you get. Here's actually that famous example showing us how the universe expanded over time by using a loaf of bread. But basically, one of the main missions for the James Webb is to try to calculate the Hubble constant and to basically find out how fast the universe is expanding at different points of time and at different points of space. Because measuring the Hubble constant is currently one of the main types of research in cosmology that hit a bit of a snag. And that's because back in 2015, by using the super accurate observations from the first light in the universe, the cosmic microwave background, and by the way, the video in the description talks a little bit more about this, researchers confirmed that right at this point, right in the beginning, the expansion of the universe was equivalent to about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Or just to rephrase this, for every million parsec or for every 3.26 million light years, we actually expect objects to accelerate by 67 kilometers per second. And so just to give you a kind of a visual comparison, if what you're looking at right there is the Andromeda galaxy and what we have right here is the Milky Way galaxy, with the distance between them being approximately two and a half million light years, by doing just a little bit of math here, we can calculate that the expansion of the universe between the Andromeda and the Milky Way should be about 51.4 kilometers per second. And that's assuming the calculations from that first light in the universe from the CMB. But the thing is, that's not exactly what we find using something entirely different. And that's because observations from the Hubble telescope and from the Spitzer telescope, which mostly focused on nearby stars in various galaxies around us, discovered the value to be different, closer to about 74 km per second, which once again for the Andromeda would make this value about 56.7 km per second. And so which one is it? This or this? And as you might know historically, one of the main points for the Hubble telescope was to actually calculate the Hubble constant. Its entire mission for the past 35 years was to try to find the most accurate value for this constant in order to discover how fast the universe is expanding. And the reason that's important is because the expansion of the universe tells us a little bit more about the total age and the size of the universe, as depending on the value, the universe could be as young as 10 billion years old or even older than 20 billion years old. And so by using various observations, usually involving stars known as Cepheid variables, which one of the links in the description talks a little bit more about, time and time again, Hubble and Spitzer telescopes reveal the constant to be closer to 74 km per second, but very, very different from the value from the beginning of the universe. And that was, of course, the essence of this Hubble tension. For some reason, the values from the Planck telescope and the values from the Hubble and other telescopes were not adding up. It's as if the universe started to expand faster in recent times, but why this happened made no sense. And one of the first explanations was basically that, okay, well, Hubble is kind of old. Maybe it's just making a mistake somewhere. And so one of the first missions for the James Webb was to essentially confirm the observations from Hubble using an extremely similar approach. And in 2023, that's exactly what the James Webb was able to achieve. It was able to use extremely similar observations that were much more accurate to directly confirm the observations from Hubble and to once again confirm the same value for the so-called Hubble constant. And so the new explanation was that Okay, well maybe there is something we don't understand about Cepheid variables, or maybe there is some other underlying mistake somewhere else. And even though the Cepheid variable stars have always been a kind of a gold standard for establishing distances in outer space, as a matter of fact, going back to the Andromeda, 
That's actually exactly how back in 1920s Edwin Hubble was able to confirm the distance to this galaxy. He actually found a Cepheid variable inside of this galaxy, establishing the distance to be millions of light years and not just thousands of light years. Here's actually that famous picture that he took with a tiny scribble indicating the star. Maybe in this case there was something going on with them and some other technique had to be used to try to establish even more accurate distances by using additional observations. Because right now it really looked like the observations from the Hubble and now from the James Webb Space Telescope were suggesting the universe was expanding faster than predicted by a lot of other studies, especially studies studying the cosmic microwave background. And so in order to conduct even more detailed observations, scientists had to rely on something else that can allow us to establish distances. So basically we needed another cosmic candle, something really bright out there that allows us to establish distances. And that something usually happens during specific type of supernova. When a white dwarf explodes, it almost always produces very similar brightness. And we actually call this supernova type 1a. And so in one of the earlier studies from 2024, by using James Webb, researchers identified eight individual type 1a supernova in galaxies that also contained quite a lot of Cepheid variables. As a matter of fact, over a thousand. And so here by combining these Cepheid variables with type 1a supernova in those galaxies, they were able to establish distances to those galaxies even more precisely, once again confirming the Hubble tension and the overall value of the Hubble constant to be extremely close to that initial value of 74. And so at least in the local universe, this appeared to be the value for the expansion of the universe. And well, it still didn't make sense, but researchers wanted to keep looking and to actually find something else farther away in order to see if this value really changed over time or if there's maybe something else going on. But the thing is when it comes to Cepheid variables and even type 1a supernova, at certain distances they're just extremely difficult to see. And so here in this study, the limit was actually 130 million light years. In other words, we needed another method. And well, thanks to Einstein, we know of such method involving gravitational lenses. Turns out that in the last two years, James Webb has also discovered some really exciting gravitational lenses that revealed something super exciting. And so during one of these observations, researchers studying one of these lenses wanted to actually ask one question. What exactly are those bright dots? And more importantly, were they actually there before? When Hubble took this image as well back in 2015. And turns out that these dots were not there. And that's because these three individual dots inside of this cluster known as G165 were actually showing us something super rare. This was once again a supernova, but in this case it was just one supernova that was lensed by this cluster so much that it appeared as three separate images. And that's because the light from the supernova took three separate pathways as a result of this lens in order to reach planet Earth. And we've seen these effects many times before, or they usually involving bright objects like quasars, and sometimes they even form four images. This is what's known as the Einstein's cross. But much more importantly, this was once again a type 1a supernova. As a matter of fact, this was the first ever type 1a supernova discovered inside such a gravitational lens. And because this is a type 1a supernova, we know its inherent brightness, which means that we can now establish distances. But here we see the same supernova from three different perspectives. And most importantly, arriving at three separate times because each image traveled slightly different distances. In other words, each of these images is basically the same type 1a supernova, but with just a slight delay. And so this trifold supernova image is extremely special. So special as a matter of fact that it's now called SN Hope or Supernova Hope. Because here this is our hope to resolve the Hubble tension. Although technically it's just called SN H0 PE because H0 stands for Hubble constant. So it's a kind of a play on words. But in essence, by observing the time delays in three of these images and by establishing distance to each of them, since this is the same image, it allows us to then establish by how much the universe expanded by comparing the time of arrival of the first image with the last image. And since this is also coming from extremely far away distances, when the universe was only about three and a half billion years old, this is actually one of the more exciting discoveries when it comes to resolving Hubble tension. And so several studies like this one right here by Perel and his team tried to calculate the Hubble constant by using the observations of supernova Hope. There are actually five separate studies doing this 
and they all seem to come to a very similar conclusion. Despite the really far away distances, and here we're talking about a distance of about 16 billion light years, here the value for the constant was close to about 75 km per second per megaparsec, although also with a much larger error, plus approximately 8 minus approximately 5.5, so technically it could be as high as 83 km per second or as low as 70 km per second per megaparsec, which is actually extremely close to the values from the Hubble and from the Spitzer telescope, but once again super different from the ones discovered by Planck telescope. So basically the ones from the cosmic microwave background. And this makes it a super intriguing discovery. It essentially means that even back in the days, here we're talking about almost 10 billion years ago, the universe appeared to be expanding really fast already. And so whatever change in acceleration happened must have happened really early on. But because this study seems to confirm the Hubble tension once again and does not actually help us resolve anything just yet, it means that we're going to be coming back and talking more about this in a lot of future videos. But when it comes to conclusions from the study and from all of these observations, well first of all, because this is only the second time such a technique has been used to establish distances to faraway regions, we obviously need a lot more similar observations before any conclusions can be reached. But despite this, the conclusion right now is that there's maybe something in the universe we still don't understand. As a matter of fact, there's maybe something we completely misunderstood based on previous observations. But because this has been now down once, we can do this again to find even more values, especially because scientists actually chose this sector because they've discovered it had a very high star formation rate of approximately 300 solar masses per year, which is why they were able to detect a supernova so quickly. And because similar regions exist elsewhere, there's a very high chance we're going to see more of these than supernova really soon, and so the name Supernova Hope is actually quite fitting. It really gives us hope that maybe in the next few years, we'll finally be able to solve this mystery once and for all, and thus explain the evolution of the universe, discovering its true age, its true size, and of course its eventual fate. But at least for now it's going to remain a mystery, and a mystery that has been officially confirmed by James Webb several times. Hubble tension seems to be real, and there's really no explanation for what's going on and for why the universe expands differently in different locations. And so until future discoveries, check out some of the previous videos in the description, Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.